Hi, this is Julian Goldman, presenting Quantum Clinical Scenario Number 2, Preparing the Intensive Care Unit to Receive a Patient After Cardiac Surgery. After cardiac surgery, patients are transferred from the operating room to the intensive care unit. This is a period in which everyone must be very careful and well prepared. Patients are typically unstable. They might be on several medications, each of which are being infused uh, in very carefully controlled rates to maintain the blood pressure and the cardiac rhythm and cardiac rate uh, within a certain desired range. The patient may be receiving a blood transfusion. Uh, the patient may be bleeding a small amount. Uh, after the surgery, that blood is usually collected in various drains or tubes. The patient is typically still asleep with ventilation that is being assisted with the mechanical ventilation. In transport, that's been done by either a transport ventilator or by a bag that is squeezed by the uh, anesthesiologist to ventilate the patient's lungs. And then upon arrival in the intensive care unit, the patient is transferred to an ICU ventilator to ventilate the lungs. So there's a lot going on. It's a busy period. It uh, is an opportunity uh, to unfortunately introduce errors and uh, problems with patient care due to um, erroneous information and the handoff from the OR team to the ICU critical care team. It is possible for equipment not to be ready and prepared in the intensive care unit. There may not be a sufficient number of infusion pumps, for example. There may not be the appropriate number of pressure transducers to measure uh, blood pressure because blood pressure could be measured uh, from the uh, central circulation as well as from the peripheral circulation. And so more than one blood pressure transducer is needed in that, se in that uh, setting. And there are many other procedures that have to be followed uh, immediately upon arrival in the intensive care unit. So it's a, a time of great complexity, a time of risk to the patient, and one in which uh, teamwork is essential and uh, even despite all of that effort, uh, errors and, and adverse events still occur. In order to address some of these issues, uh, we've developed a scenario and I will outline some of the details here. The clinical summary of the scenario is as follows. The patient undergoes coronary artery bypass graft surgery in the operating room. This is typically called a cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft. And at the end, towards the end of surgery, a, a supervisory system reads data from the medical devices in the operating room using the, the interoperable medical device interfaces. So the system can read the ventilator settings from the anesthesia machine, read the infusion pump settings from all the infusion pumps. That would include reading the name of the medication, the infusion rate, things such as that. Also, uh, any other medical devices that are being used with the patient, their status would be read, and other relevant data would be obtained from the OR team. If it can't be obtained automatically, directly from a medical device or directly from the EHR, then there will also be a means for the staff to manually enter requests or specific information. One would assume that allergy information will be able to be pulled from the EHR, but there may be difficulty in assessing other things uh, directly, and, and that will require uh, information from the staff. The information that's obtained from the operating room will then be used in the intensive care unit. The data will be used to preset the devices in the ICU. So the, anest the anesthesia ventilator in the operating room will be used to provide information for the post-operative ICU ventilator settings. Now, they may not be able to be identical because the circumstances are different, but uh, there will be relevant information from one ventilator settings that can be used to preset the ventilator in the ICU. And then we would expect that appropriately skilled staff would confirm those settings. And that would be true for the intravenous infusion pumps and any other devices. In addition, the system will be able to read the number of invasive pressure channels that are used in the operating room, which may be two, three, or four, and will be able to assess whether those pressure channels are in place and ready in the intensive care unit. If not, the information that the system identifies uh, uh, or aggregates will be used to message the ICU staff and indicate whether there are things that have to be obtained in terms of equipment or medications, whether there 
our devices that are not ready to go. That would be a an assessment of system readiness, uh, whether the you know infusion pumps, for example, are powered on, batteries charged, and uh, primed and ready to infuse. And also, the system will be able to look at the standardized uh, workflows or checklists that are used to receive post-op cardiac patients in the ICU and alert staff if there are things that have to be addressed. We understand in this scenario that not every, uh, uh, not all the information that is needed will be obtainable from the ICU uh, in terms of assessing the readiness of equipment, nor will all of it be obtainable from the operating room. Uh, but our vision is to obtain as much as possible, either automatically or where it is necessary, manually. So the clinical innovations that are introduced with this scenario include the accurate, timely availability of rapidly changing OR data in order to prepare the ICU, thereby minimizing uh, delays in accepting and stabilizing the patient. There are times when the surgery is complete in the operating room, but the patient has to wait in the operating room until the ICU is ready to prepare, ready and prepared to receive the patient. This is not uncommon. It may be that at the end of surgery, um, an additional drug or an unusual drug was started and that drug is not available in the ICU. It could be that there are special ventilation needs and the ICU ventilator is not the correct one to manage the patient's unique requirements and, and things of that sort. Also, there's a timing issue for staff and personnel availability in the ICU. The ICU staff tries to manage their own workflow and breaks uh, so that they are fully staffed and ready to receive a patient upon arrival because the staffing requirement to initially settle a patient uh, safely in the intensive care unit is higher, of course, than the requirement uh, once the patient is uh, tucked in and stable. Other things may have to be done as well. Frequently, a uh, radiology technician will have to be on notice to uh, arrive shortly after the patient settles in the intensive care unit to obtain a chest x-ray, for example. So the innovations here are the ability to have that level of preparedness to minimize delays and minimize errors and facilitate the handoff. Uh, in addition, there's the enabling of, as we discussed previously, the dynamic, smart, contextual checklists, which are anticipated to reduce nursing workload as well as um, errors related to the transfer of these complex patients. There are a number of technical innovations that are being developed as part of this scenario. The notion of querying the complete status of medical devices through their network interface is novel. This is not something that can be done today routinely, uh, although it's routine in other domains, such as reading the status of networked desktop computers or printers. Doing that with medical devices today is difficult and typically incomplete. In addition, the configuration of medical devices remotely is innovative. For some devices, this will present uh, a problem purely from a basic technical aspect, meaning the device may not have the capability to have its uh, configuration perform remotely. And part of the reason for that, that challenge is that manufacturers today have been concerned that if they provide access to device settings remotely, that could result in inappropriate use of the device, uh, in someone inadvertently setting the device at a time when they shouldn't, and other other clinical and safety concerns such as that. And we're addressing those issues through a number of means in terms of the uh, hazard analysis for this type of implementation. A different uh, set of complexities arise when one is transferring ventilator settings. Not all ventilators have the same settings. They don't all have the same uh, modes, so to speak. And they're, the modes have different names, uh, which are typically proprietary and are different for each manufacturer. Therefore, the ICU ventilator may have a mode that does not match up in name to the ventilator that's used in the operating room. Therefore, we have to translate these, uh, these terms or modes from one ventilator to another and ensure that we're doing so in a way that will be equivalent from a clinical standpoint. That poses an interesting and unique challenge. We've already talked a bit about the system readiness assessment of a clinical environment. Uh, I like to think of it as the equivalent of a post of a power on self test for a computer. And here we're looking for a, a, a test of a clinical environment to assess that it's uh, ready to receive a patient 
and manage the patient appropriately. Um, the dynamic checklist for the ICU staff is another novel idea. The idea that uh, a checklist, instead of presenting a, a list of items that have to be manually checked, uh, specifically we're looking at an implementation in which things that can be automatically checked off, so to speak, or detected, are taken care of automatically. Why bother the staff? Why alert them to the need to check off a box in the checklist if the system could automatically detect that that step has been performed anyway? We are also looking at connectivity not only to the operating room to obtain data from those medical devices, but connectivity to the clinical information system to obtain other data, such as allergy data, and also looking at connectivity more broadly um, to the uh, nationwide health information network to uh, see if it's possible to pull important patient data from that type of source. If you have any questions, please look at our website, www.mdpnp.org.